You ready? Yeah, I don't have a flat a flip screen, so don't worry about it. Okay, right off the bat here, let me welcome everybody back. Thank you for being here once again. We had some celebrity guests cancel on us last minute, and uh, it's terribly disappointing. Yeah, it is. I know. I was really looking forward to it. That's actually not the case, and we <laughs> have decided. You can tell that it's late at night, given our our dis. Yeah, this is the latest podcast we've ever done. By far. It's all romantic in here. We've got the warm lighting. Anyway, um, no. we. So last week's episode of the podcast was an incredibly intense one. So thankful and grateful to Sarah Weaver once again for coming out to chat with us. But following that discussion, we went back into our home and we started chatting amongst ourselves about who our dream guests on the podcast would be. Right. I know. Um, yeah, so... I do have one dream guest. Well, I have quite a few dream guests because it is just so fun to sit down and talk with people it is. and get to know people more. Um, but my dream unicorn guest would would be Joanna Gaines. Chip. Chip and Joanna. Chip and Joanna Gaines. Yeah, we gotta we gotta bring on the hubby. So of course we're not serious about this it's <laughs> this is a total unicorn discussion that we had and this was melissa I, I don't know that i even came up with anybody but for you it was chip and joanna yeah chip and joanna Gaines. <laughs> and so we have decided that we are starting our own unofficial campaign <laughs> hashtag get chip and joanna on the pod <laughs> do it make it happen whatever it takes They're whatever never- it requires <laughs> we have decided that we are going to now begin and end every podcast episode Speaking about having Chip and Joanna on the podcast. Yeah, no, they're going to come on. 100%. I mean, they couldn't make it this week. We figure either it's going to happen eventually or it's going to be a hilarious ongoing bit that lasts up until the point that they serve us with a restraining order. Yeah, I'll be, but at least we will have gotten their attention. So either way, we will have accomplished something. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't make it this week because, you know, I have short notice, whatever. Um, so but, be advised that on next week's episode of the podcast, our guest will be... Chip and Joanna Gaines. Chip and Joanna Gaines. <laughs> You're welcome in advance. <laughs> <laughs> no, so of course this isn't serious, but uh, yeah, we're going to make this a thing. Yeah. Because why not? We need uh, we need something to do here. Yeah, I think she's fabulous. She's... um. She's a huge inspiration to me because not only is she just like... Is this you pandering? Is this you going no, out of your way to pander right no. now? No. I really like her stuff. Continue. I have a lot of it. I put it in... I add to cart. <laughs> and sometimes I check out when there's sales. Like my birthday month. 20% off on your birthday month. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cutting board and some bowls. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll see what happens with this. Like I said, we'll we'll make it uh, an ongoing bit or they're going to serve us with a restraining order relatively quickly, in which case we will nip this in the butt. Or they'll come on next week. You don't know. You don't You don't know. Maybe next week. Stay tuned to find out. They're just busy this week. All right, Mama, what are we talking about here? Let's get serious for a second. All right. Well, speaking of Joanna Gaines. First of all, you look beautiful as you know. <laughs> I, I, I'm so intimidated sitting across from you. It's a it's a cool you, evening. You have your beautiful like fuzzy native, native shirt. print Sherpa deal going. Meanwhile, I still have my Value Village on half off day, torn up, ripped okay, up. To plaid. be fair, I think I got this sure. also twenty percent off. Okay, sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead. Um, I don't know what I was saying. I don't know what you were saying either. Was I st- was I still talking about Joanna Gaines? Uh, you can continue <laughs> if you'd like to. No, it's okay. Um. No, we'll see her next week and talk to her then. But um, yeah, so I have been noticing this whole trend online with, there's actually a bunch of women fighting. Like none of the men are actually fighting about it. But have you heard of the whole, like, I just heard this term. Somebody called me this and I was like, what is that? Because it, sound, it sounded weird. Like they called me a trad wife and I had to Google it. To see what it was. Mm-hmm. So did you just hear about this? I have or no like, idea what this is. You briefly explained it to me. And so, I mean, I, I, I guess I kind of get the gist of it, but. Yeah. So apparently this is like all the drama right now because. And to be clear, this is trad wife. Trad wives. T as in Tom, R as in Robert, A as in Adam, D as in David. Thank trad you for that. Yeah. Wife. Yeah. Trad. 
wife. For all my popo buddies out there. Yeah. So apparently it is short for traditional wife, which mm-hmm. I don't know why. As opposed to what? I don't know. So I found that weird, the fact that, you know, we have to, you know, smack a label on it. But then we have to not only politicize it, but turn it into like whether it's a very positive thing for some people or it's a very negative thing for some people. So apparently a trad wife is this whole trend on the Internet, mostly on Instagram. And these women look like a Marilyn Monroe. There's one that's really, really popular. And she's got like this blonde bouffant hair. And she is like perfect. And she wears an apron and she has kids that are clean no i know and so she bakes pies and she makes like cakes and she speaks about like serving her children and her husband and she relies on her husband and he's the breadwinner and she stays home and so a traditional all, wife so all of this sounds lovely right like it, it's a lot of women's dream not every women's not every woman wants to do that but a lot of women like that and i think there's they're craving that right now. A lot of women are kind of craving that return to it. Women my age, I think in the, that are in their thirties and (laughs) forties. You said your age. I said forties. Um, because we kind of grew up in that era where all of a sudden all the moms started going to work. Mm -hmm. And then when we were in high school, we were told you have to go to college and you have to like, go be like a boss babe. Yeah. We, I mean, we encourage the same of our, 17 year old no i mean do whatever you want i don't i don't care what it is that people choose for themselves so long as they're happy and they are not adversely affecting anybody else right do whatever you want so they're finding that a lot of women are trying to have it all and that's really difficult to do it's really hard to go to work all day long Mm -hmm. and then come back and then have that traditional family yeah it's it's ambitious it's, it's a lot, yeah. you know, and then you end up exhausted and the house is a mess and then you feel like you're failing at work and you're failing at home. And so it's led to a lot of disgruntled women or people that don't feel like their husbands are pulling their fair share of the weight and things and like so that. so there's a movement that I'm unaware of of women wanting to go back to this? Yes. Apparently there's this whole movement and it's being called the trad wife movement and they are basically making it very, very romantic and very perfect. What do you mean? They're literally dressing and doing their hair and makeup like a 50s housewife, but then making Instagram reels and videos. But to people are becoming very upset with it. Like women. What is there to be upset about? They are saying that it is selling a non-realistic view of what being a stay-at-home mom is. That that's not what stay-at-home moms look like. We shouldn't be expected to act like that. We shouldn't be expected to dress like that. And all this talk about. But are they doing this like as satire? Like, hey, let me, this is dead serious. They're they're devoting their lives Mm -hmm. to living like this 50s sitcom housewife. Yeah. Like, Uh, I mean, that does seem a little ridiculous. Yeah. I, I like the, the thought idea and ambition, but it just, why, why, why go, why take it to such a far extent? Well, because they're making a killing online. (laughs) Oh, so that's why. With the reels. I think so. I mean, I don't know. I really doubt they they put a little house dress on and an apron. So they're doing it for the gram. I think they're doing it for the gram. I think they're doing it. And they may truly believe these things, but whether or not they sit there and decorate a cake. Yeah, there's no way. Dressed the way that they're dressed. Let me me answer that question for you. No, there's no way that that's happening. Well, there's one in particular that's very, very popular. I forgot her name. She's blonde and she's like the original trad wife on Instagram. And she's been like all over TV doing these interviews. And so she's really ruffled some feathers in the feminist community uh, because she is telling women that they should be um, subservient and and all these like very, very traditional Mm-hmm. 1950s values of like you rely on your husband but she, on the other end she's saying be very careful who you date and who you marry because if you marry a man that's a little toxic or um you know not a nice person and then you put all of that on them they're going to use that towards their advantage mm-hmm. so she does teach a lot about like date for marriage and be very careful make sure it's a compassionate man you're on the same page traditional values and yeah yeah, and then you can you can put all this trust into this man yeah um but it's definitely upsetting people so i don't i don't see why i mean on the feminist side of things isn't that isn't that the entire 
concept or reasoning behind the feminist movement is to allow for women to make these types of decisions for themselves and how it is that they want to live their lives. Yeah. I mean, I, the whole thing is about choice and a lot of women are yeah. choosing to return to the home and, and be stay at home moms and stuff. Yeah, there, which I think is great. Yeah. There is a huge movement back towards home and the trad wives, even the stay at home moms are getting mad at them. So let me ask you, since you have kind of been on both sides of this argument, you for a very long period of time, back in my law enforcement days, you were a stay at home mom. You were kind of a trad wife. Yeah, I mean, I hate the, the name. It's so stupid. Like, it doesn't need a label. Everything does now, though. You have to coin everything. Right? I know. So I know, like, stay-at-home mom, even. Like, you're just a mom and a well, wife. Well, but what do you think about that? Because conversely, now, you are busting your butt working 50 hours a week. You're you're coming outside with me, getting dirty, covered in sawdust. You're editing videos. You're handling a lot of things on the business end of things, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you miss being able to just... The simplicity of being yeah, just a Yeah, because you joke home. about it. You do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it was great. Like, <laughs> it was. No, it was awesome. It was. It's fantastic. Let's go back to that. It was great. Like, for me, it was great. Like, I would wake up and I would, like, make good breakfast and, then, you know, and then we would start our homeschool day and I had a homeschool classroom. Like, it was definitely more organized now, but the kids are older, so, like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be... It was cutesy because they were little. So mm -hmm. we had a lot of art activities and stuff like that. And now it's different. Now it's like trigonometry and you know, algebra and boring stuff like that. Like I, I'm not going to sit there and yeah, make and it out of construction paper. You still do a lot of those things. You yeah. still, you're still very involved in the kids' schooling and everything. But at the same time, you are a modern working woman, Melissa. Even though you're doing it from home, you're still yeah. working. You're busting your butt. Yeah. I'm kind of confusing the the lines there. So no, it was great. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I watch a lot of like Netflix uh, documentaries in the middle of the day, you know, like it would be like two o'clock in the afternoon. I'd be like, I'm going to watch this. I can't even go back to that place. But you're discounting the reality of it at the same time, because there were years and years of mm -hmm. child rearing, changing diapers, cleaning up after kids, taking care of me, cooking meals on a daily basis, yeah. multiple meals on a daily basis. But I loved it. Like when I would look around and I have them all in my living room and I have something kind of interesting that I was watching and I'd have my tea and I'd have my baby with the puke down my back and the toddler that was probably naked next to me. And it was a mess. Yeah, I chaos. didn't wear a bra for like years. 10 years. Yeah, I mean, literally. Yeah, no, she's if not was, joking. <laughs> <laughs> if I was going to the grocery store, I just throw a sweatshirt on instead of a bra. Yeah. <laughs> and no makeup at all. Like I had an old tube of mascara that just dried up. I Yeah, never any makeup. I Very never, little makeup. I didn't brush my hair. Like I was a mess. Because your your concerns didn't extend much past the bright lights of your kitchen. No, yeah, I'm sure. I, I couldn't see outside the bright no, lights of my kitchen. That's a joke, but really your <laughs> your your world revolved around our mm -hmm. household and our family. And that was essentially the extent of it at yeah. the time. Now things have become a lot more broad, even though we still spend an overwhelming amount of our time here on the property. Yeah. I mean, people don't understand or or you know, and why would they? But they, they don't get that behind the scenes. We're we're doing a lot. Like running mm -hmm. running a we're running an online business. We're running an online yeah. business essentially, and that requires a lot of us. It's very time consuming. We're having to take uh, you know these face to well, not face to face, but they're uh, like Zoom call meetings, and you mm -hmm. know, responding to emails, keeping up on on a thousand and one things at any yeah. given time, and it's it's a lot. It really is. Yeah, and we're we're building a house and now a second house and and. It's a, yeah, before we just moved into the house and it was yeah. already done. Yeah. <laughs> and that spend, was great. Spend the rest of your life paying for it though. Yeah, exactly. So now when we decided to build our own house, now we're building hours and hours and hours every single day. And all of a sudden I'm not inside with no bra on. But I'm just saying though, so for, for comparison's sake, being that you've been on both sides of the fence on this one, mm -hmm. which, which do you prefer or find more value in? So I kind of love what the trad wife thing is doing because I think it's cute and like I like a lot of the stuff and it's promoting like being attentive with your children and being... Yeah, all good things. Yeah, serving your family. And it's, like, it's kind of a counter argument to so much of what uh, like modern day, I, I would say radical feminism has become. Yeah. Um, which I don't always think is good. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean... 
Yeah, I don't. So I don't think it's realistic, though. And so I think if anyone's watching it going, oh, this woman's perfect. I can't do that. I can't. Like, if you're trying to live up to an Instagram trad wife, you're Mm -hmm. going to be very disappointed because yeah, it sounds like more of a you're you're kind of playing a uh, character role yeah it's it's kind of like it's cute and but i don't buy it i guess i don't you, really buy it you said these women i mean again they've they've coined the, the what is their hashtag uh trad wife oh, yeah. i'm sure like oh, everything huge. else online they nowadays. literally call themselves that I don't spend much time in the social media world ironically enough and so when i hear about these things i always kind of just roll my eyes at it but um yeah, you you incentivize it when you monetize anything, right? You can you can develop these characters and portray yourself as being one thing online. You and I both know that this isn't the reality that a lot of online character type folks. Yeah, so live. I'm looking at this this woman in particular, and I'm listening to her interviews, and she's saying all the right things, and she's talking about how she's just this attentive mother and everything. But I'm her. going, I know the reality of putting out this many reels, this many posts, the sponsors, the you just lose so much credibility with me when you're doing it for like it's a great message and I'm I'm glad you're promoting it and everything but when your 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 motivation and incentive in doing it is financial you're kind it's of discrediting yourself. Yeah, you're you're absolutely discrediting yourself. You're saying all of those things which are right again in my opinion but you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Right. Well, she was kind of going um off about why women shouldn't have careers. And All I was thinking the whole time was you have a complete career. You're like Mm -hmm. an extremely successful influencer on Instagram making very high production stuff. That's a a career. Do you think it's worthwhile to touch upon and explain to maybe some of the people watching and listening how that works? In the social media world, how do do you make money? How How do views correspond to money? How's that work? Okay. Um, So there's a big misconception that subscribers or followers make you money and they don't they don't make you a dime. they don't make you anything yeah so unless you, they're watching right so if, you can have a million followers but you're not going to make a penny off that yeah i think I, I say i think what i know because i see it all the time i think people don't have a firm grasp of mm-hmm. how and at least in the youtube world because that's you know where we dabble primarily yeah of how you you take this production that you make, this video that you make and monetize it. Right. It's not, again, if you have, you can have a million subscribers and make very little money or you can have a hundred subscribers. Well, no, I guess not. You can, you can have a thousand subscribers and make far more than the person with a million subscribers. The number of followers or, or subscribers that you have means essentially nothing. nothing. Usually just means that you either had a few things pop off and go viral, but those people never came back and watched again. Or you've been doing it for a really long time and you have 2,000 videos in your library. Mm -hmm. And you've just slowly gathered subscribers. But um, most subscribers, that's not actually where the majority of people's views come from. Most subscribers aren't even watching the people. Like there's people that are subscribed to 200 channels and they watch two of them. And so this is the problem with with the whole concept of things like this trad wife movement is that you incentivize and you, you like... Of course, the things that are are highly um, inflammatory or you know, just anything that garners a lot of attention. You mm-hmm. have, that's why you have people doing such outlandish things online is because the more attention that they can snag, the more money they're going to make. Right. So you get paid for views and watch time. And that's true of Instagram or any other platform. So short form is obviously harder to make money at, which is what a lot of these women are doing. But where they're making money is going to be in those little individual like, you know, sponsor videos and things like that. So it's absolutely a career. They're definitely working women and they're yeah, working very hard. There's nothing wrong with that. So so I think that's where like people are getting mad. They're like, okay, they're not what they're saying and what they're pretending to do isn't even what they're actually doing. And then you've got people on the other side getting mad because they're pushing these traditional uh, values. values that they view as making women unhappy or stuck or they think it's regressive yes. and then that we're going back to the world that they they fought so hard to uh right. move beyond like I why guess. are we trying to go back to the 50s women back then weren't happy they were stuck in their home and i just don't like when people speak up on behalf so matter of factly on behalf of other people like mm-hmm. just just being simply being a woman and i better be tread lightly here and tiptoe because god forbid mm-hmm. i as a man express my opinion on this but um i think it's it's, it's so frustrating to see or hear people speak up on behalf of somebody else because you don't know mm-hmm. we're all individuals ultimately and and again i think the most important part of of the 
you know, uh, feminist movement, if you want to refer to it as that, is that it, it enabled so many women to pursue things that at one point in time were, were considered outside of the norm. And that's fine. Now you have that choice. It's great. Pursue yeah. and live whatever life, like I said, you want to live for yourself so long as you're not hurting anybody else in the process. Yeah. I mean, our moms were moms of the 80s and the 90s. They were going out there. They were getting their Jenny Craig. They were getting their... <sighs> they, were, they were getting their um, aerobics on. They had the little oh, yeah. bathing suits. Oh, yeah. They had spandex. the little thong bathing suits. <laughs> like the thong with the pants. Those are like thong spandex, right? Why? But then they yeah, put pants necessary. underneath or like yellow bike shorts with like a hot pink speckled thong. It's a good look. Oh, man. And then they'd be like... Do it, girls. Yeah. Step, step aerobics. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a big thing back in the day. Oh, man. Step aerobics were hard. My mom drug us to those sometimes. And we had the the step that came in three parts. It was pink and teal and I think like purple or something. And then you could take the steps off. Like if you were just starting, you only do the top, the pink layer. But then like if you were really advanced, you'd have all three layers. The girl with the yellow hair, yeah, the you big stacked yellow them. hair at the front of the room, she had the three my mom used a single one. I totally remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Step aerobics. So where do you think this whole trad wives movement goes? I think it fizzles. Really? I think it's just a trend right now. It's just, it's just women staying home with their kids. This is not a trend. This is not a hashtag. This is stupid. How old are most of these women <laughs> they that are doing young. this? <laughs> like 20s? Yeah. No, I mean, I think that's cool though. I mean, because it is so, it just goes against the grain. And, and, I, and I do like that part of it, that aspect of it, for sure. I mean, yes and no. I feel like as long as social media has been around, there's been all kinds of, there's the homeschool moms and the travel moms and the homesteading moms and the home building moms. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, there's, there's. Yeah, and all that's great. So I don't know. The whole like doing the hair, it, it, it's cute. It's whatever. It's content. But like people need to view it as entertainment and maybe not reality you know you know for sure that that's not the case and there are people that are actually buying into mm -hmm. it but i think that's fine too i mean if like the, the whole term influencer which i absolutely despise but it, it's yeah. a reality of the situation if they're influencing especially younger wives or females to like really ponder their you know the, the decisions that they've made for themselves and kind of the goals that that they have in mind for themselves and that that causes them to to make a change and actually devote themselves more so to being like a mother and a wife. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah. And I do like what that woman said about, you know, being very careful who you marry and who you line yeah, yourself with, because important. it's so important. If mm -hmm. you don't have the right partner that you could literally set yourself up for a nightmare situation because yeah. being dependent on a controlling or, um, you know, abusive man or something like that is a nightmare. That applies regardless. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We've, we've talked about that. But it's worse when you put yourself in a situation that you haven't, educated yourself or you know gone to college this girl dropped out of college um and then and then you get in a situation where you're not able to earn money or you never have and now you have a bunch of kids mm -hmm. and you know like so she she really warns people to go into that lifestyle cautiously and i don't even know if she meant it as serious as it's become or but now there's been a lot of other people that have come up so there's one her. primary figurehead to this whole thing there's a most the most popular one. Yeah. Get her on the pod, Melissa. Get I know. Her on the pod. She's been on other interviews. I mean, I talked to her. I I think that I wish my hair looked like hers. I just wonder what the <laughs> genesis was for all of this. And like I'd love to I hear the know. backstory that led to her, you know, coming up with this this character or not. It's a it's a character either way. It's but gotta be. Yeah. What 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 happened in your life that led to you being like, here's what I'm gonna do from here on? I think there's a lot of women that are really passionate about staying home and being homemakers and doing the best they can and making a cake for their husband. Yeah, but the modern day mainstream narrative kind of goes against that. And and I think a lot of women are discouraged or like even if you if you express a desire yeah. to do that, you're, you're kind of looked at as like, mm, well, you're setting us back. Now, as a stay at home mom, I've been a little guilty of doing it even to our own daughter, like because she's expressed like, I want to get married and have kids. And then I'm like, well, what about like a job or a career? And I'm she's like, yeah. And she's yeah. like, mm. and I want her to have a plan. And because if it doesn't work out, you know what I mean? Like as a parent, yeah, you worry, I, I like, mean, what if that doesn't work out for you? For or? sure. Yeah, I've I've had many discussions with her about that very thing yeah. ironically so i guess i'm kind of a hypocrite in, in a sense yeah. because yeah I, I i don't ever want her to feel as though she is like stuck and yeah. reliant, reliant on her husband to where she has no other options 
it's not a good place to be. And I, you know, I hope she marries somebody that, that, um, she is incredibly, incredibly compatible with, and she is able mm-hmm. to live out that, that life. I think that's great too. But yeah. if God forbid you ever get stuck in an awful, horrible situation that she you feel like you can't apartment. leave, it's just, yeah, it's just not <laughs> yeah. it's part of the reason that's there, but yeah, um, but we yeah. don't want her to ever have to do that. Right. Yeah. Just, you know, we've talked a lot about uh, marriage so far on the podcast and being, you know, equally yoked. Yeah. And if that wasn't the case and, and you know, God forbid anything horrific were to be occurring within her marriage that daddy would have to take care of. <laughs> Got a um, backhoe. <laughs> it's just, yeah, you don't, you don't want to facilitate a situation where you ever feel stuck, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right. And that's how I feel about my own daughter. So it's really easy to say like, no, I think this is great. And I want all the, uh, like, uh, you know, women to do this and stuff. And this is, you know, wonderful. And this is what I did. And I found a lot of happiness in it because I did my braless mess of a self that smelled sour all the time. Kira had reflux for like two years. I smelled like sour milk for at least 24 months. And I Loved it. I was going to say, yeah, I it's would, kind of a good smell, right? It's I a good memory. get in the shower and the hot water would like, I could smell <laughs> the pu- like the Breast puke, <laughs> but it was like, she would like half digest it and then it would be curdled and yeah. then come up. She well, had that like, yeah. would they say it was a loose flappy valve or something? Oh. <laughs> well, now it turns out. <laughs> Science. Well, now it turns out the cure is lactose intolerant, which we didn't know. So I think that had a lot to do with her whole reflux thing. Yeah. So anyway, totally off topic, but. I loved it. I loved the smell of sour milk rising in the shower. And I would hurry in the shower so I could like get back to them. So again, to go back to my original question of which which you think, which option do you think holds within it more value? I'm going to say that it depends on the person, right? right? Again, it's it's a personal choice. It's a personal matter. Do whatever it is you want to do. But don't ever knock somebody for choosing something for themselves that you would not choose for yourself. That doesn't mean that they're wrong. That doesn't mean that they're doing something that is setting you back in any way. It's just a personal decision. Well, I think a lot of people are also frustrated. A lot of moms are frustrated that are stay-at-home moms because they're like, that's not what motherhood looks like. There's postpartum depression and fat butts and, you know, like your body changes and you're... What do you think about postpartum depression? Can you talk about that for a second? Because as a man, obviously that's something that I've never had to experience. I've gotten it from, you know, just being uh married to and being around you um and then you know mm-hmm. it's been brought up as well on the podcast in fact it came up last week with sarah so can you talk mm-hmm. about that and the just the complexities that come with that, um, that time of your life postpartum depression is a really funny thing that sneaks up on you because you have it's kind of like an endor- endorphin dump for me it was it's 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 hormonally driven mm-hmm. correct yeah so you have all these um hormones when you're pregnant and then and like depression is something i have never ever really had a Suffered problem enough. with yep. um, yeah you are melissa is an incredibly upbeat happy very optimistic person <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i just yeah i'm just happy in life yes. i'm happy where we are and um i've always just kind of found joy in where i am and so it kind of took me by surprise I had a little bit of it with Nevaeh, but I thought that it was just anxiety mm-hmm. and exhaustion. Um, I'm sure that's part of it. I had a lot of it with Kaimani because at the time he was my last baby. I think a lot of women experience it when it's their first or their last baby. Um, what do you mean? Because you 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 know, I so thought that I was done having kids with Kaimani. You have to expand on that. Yeah, we we never set out to have four kids. No, we, we, we always thought that we were going to have two kids. Yeah. And then after I had him, I felt so sad because I just didn't feel done. And then when I saw him as a newborn and I had already like delivered him and everything, I just felt so sad, but like there was no end to it. Like I would look at him and I would just be sad and I wasn't sad about him. I didn't know why I was sad and like I couldn't control it. But it was like an overwhelming feeling of sorrow. But do you think that this was a like mental thing or or I think a it was hormonal. hormonal thing or a combination of both? I think mine was hormonal mostly because it was like in the few weeks after I had him, mine didn't go on very long. So I would I would categorize it more as maybe baby blues, which is not as um, severe severe necessarily. as postpartum. Yeah, yeah, all all kind of the same general thing yeah right? and then i experienced it again with kira and it was literally but i recognized it that time it was like the day i brought her home as soon as i got well i started in the hospital like right after and then the only child that i didn't experience it with was eli hmm. and the only thing that i could really equate to the change would be home birth versus hospital birth 
Um, in the hospital, all of my births were drug induced. First three, Nevea, Kaimani, Kiro, yep. all hospital. I, yep, I had epidurals and they were all um, Pitocin babies. Like they just start, you know, putting that in your IV to speed things along. Right. And then as soon as you have the baby, they take it from you. Even if it's just for a few minutes, they just usher it off. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Eli, there were no drugs involved at all. And I had him at home and then I pulled him up and I held him right away and they just let me do that. And I connected with him so much differently. I don't know. Like I didn't have that And you that think that had, an, that had an impact on, on how you were feeling emotionally at the time? I, I never, maybe, or just not being in the hospital, being in my own bed, having control of my child. Like they, you know, like in the hospital and you try to lay next to your baby and then they're like, no, we yeah. can't have you rolling on them here. And they keep putting it in the little box. I think that's more of a liability issue. It is for sure. I understand it. The hospital beds are small and there is liability there. Um, but I hated that. And yeah. um, as soon as they would leave the room, I would just waddle back over there and grab <laughs> the baby again. Waddle, waddle, waddle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, but like with Eli, I remember my midwife like wrapped him up and he, and laid him between us. It was four o'clock in the morning. We were so exhausted. And she was like, let him stay here for the night. I'll see you tomorrow. And I was like, yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I didn't really, I just never really experienced it with him, but I also didn't experience that exhaustion of being in the hospital and they wake you up all the time. Yeah. And That's really interesting though, that you felt differently about mm -hmm. that. I mean, it, it makes sense because the hospital is such a it's such an intense experience, especially for, it's I mean, exhausting. You know, you're, yeah, exhausting. They're, they're, like you said, they're loading you up with drugs yeah. and you just, it's, it's a foreign, everything's cold and, and very sterile and not a lot of comfort that's being offered yeah. up to you as opposed to being at home where everything's mm -hmm. warm and yeah. comfortable and familiar. Yeah. It's, I woke up in the morning and I had coffee on my couch. Yeah. It's a much different my experience. Coffee pot. And even, even from my standpoint, like totally different experience. Yeah. And yeah, I just went from the bed to the couch and we watched football. Oh, it was so like great. nothing happened. It was so great. Like all you had beer the next day. Yeah, it was I awesome. did. We had pizza and beer. So I don't know. Um, but I will always like when I'm teaching people about the homeschool or or baking or canning or anything, I'm always like, no, this isn't perfect and this isn't pretty. Cause I think the reality of being a stay at home mom is it is a mess. Your floor is sticky. Even if you try, mm -hmm. kids are like, give a toddler a bowl of rice and see what happens. Rice is a bad idea. And so I think that it does create an unrealistic look at motherhood. Mm -hmm. And then if you're a new mom and then you go into it thinking you're going to wear a checkered dress and you're going to curl your hair and you're going to look your best for your husband because they're like, you got to look your best for your <laughs> husband. And I think that if you can't fulfill that or you're feeling blue or you're just tired and you give two craps anymore or baby spit up in your hair. Like that's okay. So how long do you remember that feeling lasting for you? Mm, I don't remember how long it went on. I mean, we're weeks. talking a couple weeks, couple yeah, months, weeks. weeks. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Multiple. Yeah. Multiple weeks. So and it, it, it could just be that it's like on. a like hormonal balancing out maybe. Yeah, I don't, you I don't know. know I guess it kind of went on longer than that because it was like every time that they would change stages, I would feel yeah. sad again. Yeah. Like all of a sudden then they didn't have the turtle legs. Is it, is it the same way, like with all the changes that, you know, we're experiencing now with our kids being older, is it the same kind of a feeling or is no, it different? I think it was more intense. Like you want to hold on to that baby so much longer. Okay. Yeah. That and makes sense. And there's a lot of guilt with like mothering. There's so many things that they tell you to do or not do or, or parenting. Remember when we had Nevea mm -hmm. and there were all those rules. Yeah. We were just talking about this. Yeah. Sleep training. Not only that, but you were told you need like, you know, you need this product, you need Wipe this, you, don't need, uh, you need the, we, and we didn't use like literally 80% of it. But we tried to, like we put the wipes in the wipe warner and then they would turn brown, they would smell funny. Again, I think it's just like you were saying, there's, there's expectation and there's reality, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're a new parent, you have no idea what the reality is. So you mm -hmm. try to fulfill this expectation that, that you, you like uh, establish in your mind or like, yeah. you know, you're influenced by things that you see on in, in media or and stupid catalogs that you're looking at because you right. want to buy a brand new stroller and have your life look just so with a happy family walking right. to the park down the sidewalk like yeah it's just not realistic and it, it just kind of ultimately sets you up for disappointment which leaves you feeling like crap i think it can set men up for disappointment if they have that 
Because there's men that are getting into this whole trad wife thing too, where they're like, yeah, that's what I want. There's literally a song, like I'm looking for my 1950s woman. (laughs) Really? Yeah, it's a song and it's ridiculous. And um, if men have this expectation that women are going to be perfect little hair done and they should have their makeup done. I mean, there was one, it wasn't this influence of her. There was another lady saying that you shouldn't let your husband see you without your makeup on because you should always look your best. So get up earlier than he does to put your <laughs> face on. To spare us the horror. <laughs> of dark circles. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not, that's not what marriage, I don't know. For me, that's not what marriage is about, right? It's about having insight into uh, your, your partner and being the only person to see them without their face yeah. on in the morning. Or like, you know, like when I wake up and I, I told you joking in the middle <laughs> no, of the night. No, no. What? <laughs> You get special insight into your partner and that's what makes, you know, your relationship what it is. Right. It's, it's a special relationship because you know only certain aspects of this person and right. nobody else in the world does, just you. Yeah, like I want to be able to be a mess around you and that be okay. And I think that that's, that's love fine. because I want, I, I, we're going to get old, you know, your earlobes yeah. are going to sag and my... Yeah, I look like crap right now. So Boobs are going to be down it's, here it's, from not wearing a bra for the last 12 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, it's... I, Again, just to go back to the whole expectation versus reality and then tying it back into social media, social media can be a dirty place in that mm-hmm. way, you know, because it's it can so mislead you. And if you're young or you're inexperienced in a certain field, yeah. um, you know, you're going to set up this this unrealistic expectation for yourself. And yeah. that just leads to disappointment ultimately. Right. And nobody wants to experience that. No. Yeah, I think it, I think it can set you if you take it seriously, it can set you up for disappointment. And that is true of any genre online. That is true of homesteading. That is true of gardening. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you see these people move out and have this beautiful garden, look at my zucchinis. No, I'm saying that because we just picked a bunch of zucchinis. Some people pull it off, but what they're not showing is the amount of work or the right. amount of um, you know help that they have. Or, or the failures. Um, or the failures, yeah. Like which, my Roma tomatoes this year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, we've, we've shown a tremendous amount of failures. And it's why, like, this is why I like doing the podcast so much is because it, there's no, like, there's no, it's uncut. We literally call it that. We come yeah. in here um, right now. What time is it? It's really late at night on, yeah. a, on a Sunday after, you know, we got some stuff done today. And uh, it's just, it's, it's what is, I find appealing about doing this. It's why I enjoy doing it so much. Yeah. And to, so to tie this back in here, you mentioned um, this mommy vlogger that's being yeah. brought up on criminal charges for like neglect or abuse. Right. To t- since we have been talking about trad wives and yeah. mothering and social media. So... Yeah. So with social media, I think it's important to understand that whether it's a picture on Instagram, I mean, there are beautiful pictures on Instagram of all this stuff, but like people need to understand that these are photos, these are edited. This is like the best photo of 20. Um, Like even our videos are just our, our life or what I'm capturing. I just like to look around, you know, like, oh, we're picking potatoes this weekend yeah, so we, we've we said just it. take it's, it's, shots of it it's a week that has been boiled down to 20 minutes right. a 20 minute highlight it's reel highlights. of a week yeah like you didn't i didn't show you scooping dog poop yeah and me trying to peel off the thing on debbie's leg our and lives are very boring yeah they really are <laughs> but not everything yeah so like we show the, the nice stuff and and we do show our mistakes and stuff too but there's no music playing in our everyday life. So like when we make a vlog, I use on average 12 songs and I love the songs are beautiful and I do wish they would play while I would ride horses in real life, but they're, (laughs) they're not. Usually when, when he's running, he's, he's not doing it in slow motion and he's probably farting. Yeah. And And that's the reality of my horse. We've talked about a lot about, um, like the romanticism that comes along with our videos. And yeah, that's, that's the way you like to put videos together. Yeah. And it's, that's your, you know, and it's, it's a, it's almost like an artistic expression of, yeah, it means something to me. Yeah. It means something to you and you want to show it in a specific way that looks very like visually appealing and is very romantic and like, we'll, we'll drudge up like very uh like happy emotions when we refer yeah. back to it 10 years from now right? right it'd be great to watch these videos it's like a video scrapbook so like when i make a scrapbook you know i try to make it nice and, yeah. and beautiful and yeah. i put borders around the pictures and stuff because when i look back on it i want it to be yeah you want it to present a certain way yeah i want it i want to remember it as 
uh, how I've romanticized it in my head. Okay, so conversely, again, conversely. This, this this woman who was just arrested, speak to me about this because okay. I'm aware of it, but I don't know the details. Okay, so a few weeks ago, well, two weeks ago, there was a very popular mommy vlogger. So there is a whole thing over in Utah. The the mom uh, Mormon mommy vloggers are really, really big deal. Mm -hmm. And they all kind of work together and stuff. And they have millions of followers. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like a huge deal. And they do these family vlogs. So one of the big ones that I became aware of a few years ago, based on a couple of videos I saw that really raised my eyebrows, um, their channel was called Eight Passengers. And her name is Ruby Frankie. And so she has six kids and she was just like kind of this traditional Mormon stay at home mom. Was she? Cause I thought she had, wasn't she part of some program that was like very. That, that came later. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I'm jumping ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So she was doing this whole, like, this is, you know, this ideal lifestyle. This is how you parent, but she was a really tough love kind of mom. Right. Well, R real big or on ju like maybe just tough. Stern discipline yeah. for her kids. I guess I didn't really see the love part. So I came across this video of hers she had like 2.5 million subscribers. And I came across this video a couple of years ago where her older son, who's a teenager, was talking about not having a bedroom for like months and months and months or a bed mm -hmm. because apparently he had pulled a prank on his younger brother. And so, and then he just wasn't being kind to his younger brother. So when they moved, he was normally sharing a room with this younger sibling. The mom decided that he did not deserve his own room. And so he wasn't given a room. And so he was sleeping on the floor in the living room and this was like a punishment. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. And what's even weirder about it, not kind of weird, it's very weird. Like you don't treat your child that way. No. And then um, what was weirder is that she discussed it online. Not discussed it from, from some of the clips that I've seen. And granted, that's just a little snippet. She was, she was, she took like an, uh, a tremendous amount of pride in like, look at how harsh I am on my kids. Yeah. Which again, very, very odd. Yeah, so there is another video that I came across where her six-year-old, six-year-old kindergarten little girl, like that's like, I call them kinder babies, mm -hmm. right? Those are babies in my mind. So she would make these children make their own lunch. They were responsible for making their own lunch. But my mom used to cut my sandwiches in stars <laughs> and then she would write a love note on the napkin. That was what I got in kindergarten. So she would make her kindergartner make her own lunch. Well, her kindergartner forgot her lunch. Mm -hmm. So the... Teacher naturally called and said, hey, um, forgot her name, but, you know, so-and-so forgot her lunch. Can you bring her a lunch to school? And the mom was like, she is responsible for packing the lunch. So no, she will be hungry today and then she won't forget her lunch anymore. And the teacher was obviously uncomfortable with that. So she gets in the car to vlog this for YouTube and is like, I really hope that nobody from the school, this is a good impression, by the way that nobody from the school um, provides her with food or feeds <laughs> her. Yeah. She was literally saying that, and she was like, I understand that the teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry, but I hope nobody provides her food. So, and this became kind of a trend through her videos. Like if they didn't get their chores done, no breakfast. If they didn't do this, no dinner. You know, like it was like- Did you watch her regularly or do you know this just from having seen some of the things I've, that have been pointed out? I watched probably like three of her videos- Pro, like Years after ago. I came across the one of the son not having the room. Yeah. Okay. Because, and it was more like, what is wrong with this woman? Like, how is she getting away with openly on social media admitting to withholding food and bedrooms and beds from her children as a form of punishment? What was the, do you, are, do you know what the audience response to all of this was? Well, there was one video like after the whole bedroom incident where then she had like this little boy he looked like he was like eli's age and he was visibly upset he was crying and he was like we don't have any friends like she kept the kids really isolated which is common i guess yeah, in control. like a, in like abusive situations yeah. so they were crying like we don't have any friends and um and they all said that even the older high school kid was like i don't have any friends mm. and and she put it on her channel like and then she was like, I love you, like all like trying to be, but the little boy just kind of like recoils. And she was like, I noticed you've been hiding from me. Like if you're having- That's such a sinister thing to say in yeah. that tone of voice. And then, yeah, like it was almost accusatory. Yeah, I noticed you've been hiding from me. It's just a little boy too. It was so Interesting sad. Interesting statement. Yeah. And then um, like one of the daughters like didn't want to talk about something. She's like, I don't want to talk about that on camera. And 
she's like, no, we are talking about this. And, you know, and she's got the camera out like selfie style. Mm -hmm. It it was just so odd to to reprimand your children. So anyway, there's this. So I I don't want to interrupt you here, but uh, I just want to loop this, tie this back into what it is we were saying earlier. The problem that I have so much, so oftentimes with social media is that people will, will, will warp and distort themselves and the reality around them because it is incentivized. Because if you get enough eyeballs responding and reacting to this very inflammatory type of behavior, Mm -hmm. you are rewarded financially. It's a problem. So she, yeah, she was garnering a lot of views and followers and stuff, I think, because people love to hate her. She was getting a lot. So there was this, also a thing. Yeah. So then there was this huge, um, like basically, what is that called? Or you get a bunch of people, listen, a petition. Mm-hmm. So they, someone started a petition to basically get her kicked off YouTube or whatever. It garnered like thousands and thousands of signatures. Mm-hmm. And they were, people were reporting her to like CPS. She's withholding food. Yeah. Her neighbors were reporting her. Her sisters were reporting her. Her older daughter, who became an adult, was trying to get her turned into authority. So the version that she was putting in the videos wasn't even the half of it. That was the nice. mild, right. I think she put it out there like, no, this is just tough parenting. But she wasn't showing the half of it. Yeah. And the kids look visibly afraid of her. And she's a crazy looking lady. Like, she's just looked crazy. So she was recently arrested. Yeah, so and brought up on uh, uh, like it uh, must be pretty severe charges because mm-hmm. she's being held without bail. Yeah, her and her friend. So her and her friend. Yeah, her and her business What's her friend's partner. involved? What's what's the involvement with her? So the okay, so two weeks ago, the neighbors who never really saw the kids unless they were like wandering around the neighborhood, like mm-hmm. asking for food and asking for friends. Yeah, weird stuff like that. I mean, total red flags. I don't understand how authorities and stuff weren't involved earlier, mm. and. So this guy calls 911. You can listen to the 911 call on the internet. And he's like, there's Wait, who's t- calling? Neighbor? The neighbor. Okay. He's like, there's a 12 year old boy here. He's asking for food and water. He's emaciated and he's got some really bad injuries around his wrists and stuff like that from being tied up from duct tape. He what? had, yeah, he had been duct taped. Um, so it, he said that he escaped the duct tape and ran out of the house, got out of the window or something what? while the mom wasn't home. This is way darker than I thought it was. Yeah, so she was literally tying him up and had been withholding food and water for who knows how long. The kids had been starving. He was emaciated. They hospitalized him. And so somewhere in her head, she's thinking that this is a, she's doing a good job of parenting. Do you do you believe that, that she thought that to herself? I think that it got worse than what it originally was. So she kicked the husband out like a year and a half prior and she moved in this business partner. So this business partner is a fellow scary looking lady who runs or works for or heads up something called Connections. It's spelled with an X. And Connections is like this parenting, tough parenting program. Mm-hmm. And they would literally go on television and they would give these interviews about this, these tough parenting strategies And she literally talked about like, if my kids don't do what I say, then they don't love me unconditionally. And I don't want that kind of love. I don't want my kids in my life. So she doesn't have her adult children in her life because they no longer put up with her BS. Um, And so anyway, she would talk and then give this advice, this parenting advice, but obviously it's terrible. And I think when the friend moved in, this other woman who started this whole tough parenting program and then Ruby Frankie got really into it. I think that's when the abuse really ramped up Mm. of the kids is the way that I interpret it. Has her channel been taken down? Her channel was taken down like a year ago, but I think she took it down. Is as like a publicity stunt or something? I think she took it down because it was just garnering way too much attention. Uh And then they started running another channel called connections Mm -hmm. where they were still spewing their garbage and this like horrible parenting. Um, But they had this platform then. And so people were really upset about it, but nothing was happening. And then it wasn't until this little boy has like lacerations from being tied up Mm -hmm. and starving. And then so So they got the ball rolling. The police come, they go to the house, they find a 10 year old girl also starving Mm. and completely emaciated. And so she's been like withholding this so trend. abuse and neglect, yeah. Yeah, and the ten-year-old girl is the six-year-old girl that forgot her lunch. She's mm-hmm. now ten. Yeah. So those are the two youngest children. Wow, I had no idea it was that crazy. Yeah. So her and her friend were arrested on six felony counts of child abuse and held without bond. I think on the September twenty-first, they 
appear in court for mm. the first time. And I think this is going to be a huge trial. I think this is going to be like all over television and everything. Cause this is, I hope this, not. I hope it, I mean, I, I get that people have a curiosity and interest and everything, but it's not, you're not, you're kind of compounding the issue and you're, you're feeding into this lady who obviously has, she's crazy and she's, crazy, and yeah. she's probably incredibly narcissistic. And mm -hmm. so to get all this attention, I'm sure in some weird, Mm. twisted way it's a weird way to get attention yeah but it's again i don't mean to keep trashing my my fellow content creators here but it, there's so much you know it there's the the level of narcissism that exists in so many people that that meander into the social media space um is is I mean, it happens at, at crazy levels that I, I don't think everybody understands or, or realizes in, uh, in in just their simple viewership. But anyway, I, I I hope that she is punished to the fullest extent of the law. She is found guilty, and those poor kids um, hopefully bounce back and uh, live happy, normal lives. Man, I don't know. I mean, the, the, this kind of tragedy of their life has played out so publicly that that's I what I mean. Know. I hope I hope they don't they don't make that worse by by making it you know, highly More publicized. Public. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's just, it's, it's. Yeah. The stuff I'm seeing, let's, like let's everyone. Let's deal with it, but let's not turn this into a, a long drawn out thing to where yeah. we get people now turning on their TVs and going online to see what's, what's happening. Like, yeah. I, and again, I understand. The yeah. I think that. that's, what's going to happen. I think people are very curious. I mean, you've got two and a half million followers. I, people I, want to see what happens. I understand the irony of me saying that as we sit here talking about it, knowing damn well <laughs> that this is going to be posted online, but it's just for the, yeah. for the sake of the kids and, and. It's, it's she should be punished and we should all collectively pray for these kids and hope that they can move on in life but, yeah, yeah um so we were we we briefly touched upon that uh, with a discussion that we were having in the house and we, we it, it made us kind of think to ourselves like okay like the kids are in our videos but we mm -hmm. we always try to be very very mindful of what it is that we show or how it is that we include them or involve them with mm -hmm. any video um that we we take because it becomes a very sticky situation. I know that there are, are legal restrictions that have come up with, you know, the extent to which you can show kids online because they, they're, they're kids. They're, they have the inability to consent to being blasted out to an audience. Right. Um, so it makes for a very uncomfortable situation. So I know you and I have always tried to be mindful of that, but what are your thoughts as far as, you know, the way we've kind of always done things with, with our involvement in social yeah. media? Well, we kind of let the kids lead it. Like if they don't feel like people would be like, oh, where is this kid or that kid in this video or that day? Or why isn't so-and-so on camera? And it's like, I don't know. They didn't want to. They didn't come out. No, either they weren't here, especially in the lately since she's getting older. Yeah. She's always gone. But yeah, it's just simply she just, she wasn't here. Mm -hmm. Or if, yeah, if one of the kids doesn't want to come, we never force our kids to do anything ever because no. we don't want, uh, again, it's just, it's makes And we always it. ask, like, do you, do yeah. you want to, like, we're going to go do this. Do you want to be in it? Because, yeah. and like. Sometimes they're like, are you filming? Yeah. And sometimes like, yeah, sometimes they like it. to be on camera. Mm -hmm. The little ones do. Yeah. But, but, but again, they're, they're little kids. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't have the ability to fully grasp, yeah. you know, the totality of the situation. Yeah. They get excited to see like their part in the video, especially Eli. Yeah. Like if he's riding a horse or something, he's riding a horse in the next video. And, uh, he wanted to like see it cause he mm -hmm. got a new cowboy hat and he's like, let me see my part. Mm -hmm. Like he likes to see it. But we rode for over an hour and we filmed for about one minute. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's done very intentionally. Yeah. Like. And, it, and it, it's, very, it's a very tough thing to navigate because, mm -hmm. you know, this is our family and yeah. we're proud of our family and we're proud of our kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they want to show their accomplishments and we want to show when they're excelling and, um, you know, when they're taking an interest in something, when they're helping us out. Like mm -hmm. we're, we take pride in that as parents, of course. Um, but you you have to be so measured of like, hey, there are like long term, mm -hmm. potentially long term like ramifications for all of this. It is very it's a very abnormal thing. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I feel like we've done an OK job at it. But there, you know, there's still times where I'm, I'm it's like, not perfect. Yeah. yeah, it's not perfect. And, I, and I, I really hope that we're doing the right thing and that our hearts are in the right place with everything it is that we have done and, and the extent to which we have shown the kids in, on videos. Yeah. And we definitely have rules as a family. Like we will never show a child crying. Yes. So yeah. Eli fell and he hurt himself and he uh, he cut open his eye like shortly after we moved here. And he had I mean, he had blood coming down his face. He yep. hit his head on the bed. And split his eyebrow. And so he needed to go in for stitches. And we could have made an entire vlog on that. And I have seen a lot of people do it. Yep. Um, but if he wasn't upset or something and he didn't care, maybe. But he was 
he was sad and he was scared. He was going in for stitches. And like the last thing that I was going to do was shove a camera in his face. Now, could we have been like, Eli got hurt and show like, you know, blood coming down his face on a thumbnail and yeah. get a million views? Yeah, absolutely. We could have. But I wouldn't do that to him. Like if they're crying. Yeah. It's cameras. Just, no. This is mom and dad time. Yes. This isn't. Uh, this isn't like YouTube oh. time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it, that's not to. I'm. It probably sounds incredibly judgmental to say like, oh, a lot of people would do this and a lot of people would do it again. It's all incentivized with with money, right? So people get to decide and choose for themselves, but it's just such a sticky situation. You look at like kids who grew up on TV or kids who were just child actors in movies. Like it, it's it's a hard thing to grapple with. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes if you listen, listen to them speak, you know, it's because it's just not a normal situation. It's not normal yeah. to grow up with cameras constantly being on. It's not it's not normal to have cameras being shoved in your face as you're trying right. to navigate adolescence and you're figuring things out for yourself. It's a, it's a very uncomfortable situation. I think parents have to be so cautious and mindful of, yeah. of their decision making, even in the moment when it can be a, a, a tough thing to do. It really can be. Yeah. Yeah, it can be. Or like they're doing something super cute. And like yeah. when when you family vlog or you vlog your life at all, all of a sudden everything becomes potential content mm -hmm. so you really have to make a decision of what's content and what's not yeah you so, have to set boundaries yeah some people got upset that we didn't show very much of like the family barbecue that we had with um the girl's birthday like yeah. we only showed 30 seconds of it maybe and that was yeah. just grainy cell phone footage that i took for us that i included at the end of the video the reason we didn't film that whole party is because we had my pop who was here he's 95 we had we had company for three days and we had all these dinners and it just wasn't a time to vlog. Yeah, we've talked about this many times, especially, I mean, even over on the main channel about how we don't like to, it's not even a matter of blurring the lines. It's just a matter of like the camera becomes very intrusive mm -hmm. when you're, when you're viewing, when you're a viewer, you're just seeing things like, yeah, no big deal. But if you, if you saw, if there was a secondary camera and you saw the reality of the situation and of either Melissa and I walking around with the camera pointing it at people and mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not a normal thing. And I, th I think you and I understand that. And this is just for ourselves. I'm just speaking just for ourselves. We always want to make sure that we are are not. We want to make sure that we are remaining present right. in our lives and that we yeah. are taking things in, um, you know, for ourselves rather mm -hmm. than being like, hey, I need to. You're not present when you're like, hey, I want to make sure I get this in frame. Ooh, the lighting is better from this direction. Mm -hmm. Let me move over here. Like, that's not, you know, it, it takes away from you. It's, it's, it's a recipe to have life pass you by. Right. It is. And I mean, there have been events that I have filmed that I I felt like I missed out on a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Like I was watching it through oh, the lens for, of a camera sure. instead uh, of... How about our, like almost our entire home build? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, our like home build. My, my memories of our home build are, are honestly are, are like 90% based in video clips. Yeah. But do you ever wonder if we didn't film it, if we would remember it at all? Like no, if it would just definitely, it? no, I would probably be like yeah. creating memories on my own. Like I'm glad, no, don't get me wrong. When it comes to our home build, like I'm glad we have all that documented. Yeah, that's so but cool to have. It just goes to show what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is like it speaks to like the, um, like your brain can become very lazy. And when you have, when you know, you don't have to like hold on to memories mm -hmm. mentally and because you have all of these video clips, it makes your, your, your literal memories of what occurred very very fuzzy yeah and that's definitely the case for me when it comes to the home build well i think that's why we said no to the whole like well it's not the only reason but it's one of the reasons we said no to the whole reality tv yeah, thing when that was presented to us because we would lose control and there would be cameras all the time mm -hmm. and right now our kids most days are not on camera probably six days a week five days a week yeah. they're never they don't see a camera mm -hmm. um when they do see it, it's so it it's so minimal. Mm -hmm. Like if we're riding horses again, we will film for like the first minute and then we put the cameras away and then we just ride. Yeah. And um I like that we do it that way, but like even sometimes that is No, we're not we're not perfect. Trust me. Yeah. Like I'm I know for a fact there have been times and situations where I'm like, we shouldn't be recording this. This is this is too much. We should just put the cameras away right now. Yeah. I, I know what's happened on numerous occasions. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that, you know, we're, we're, we're doing our best here. We're not perfect people and we're not perfect parents. We're, we're, yeah. we're trying to do our best and we're trying to measure, uh, measure and, you know, weigh out all of those very important decisions, like I said. Because it's not like the camera can't ever be out. Right. It's, it's what we have made of, you and I have made mm -hmm. a decision to, to pursue and right. do. Um, 
And but when it comes to the kids, yeah, they didn't make that decision for themselves. Right. Yeah. This is yeah you know, what mom and dad chose to do. So that's why we we try to talk with them and like we ask them if it is a birthday. Some of our kids want their birthdays recorded. Some of them don't. I mean, Kaimani was like, mm, maybe a little bit or whatever. I want you to capture this, but not this. Yeah. So like you don't see very much of Kaimani's birthday because like if we go out to dinner or something like mm-hmm. that. He's like, no, I don't. I don't want to record that. And we're like, okay, that's fine. Like, but and then there's Eli that's like, record every second of yeah. my birthday. Like he wants. Like, He's the baby. He likes the he attention. He loves to have his birthday recorded. And so this time, this last time we did it very minimally. And he was like, that was it. <laughs> like for his video. Because <laughs> he was used to having like a birthday video for Eli. And he was like, where's yeah. my video? So they're all different. And I think it's important to, to make sure that they have control of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Good discussion. But, I mean, is there <laughs> anything else you want to touch upon this week? No, I don't think so. I just, you know. Not that I'm trying to force us off here, but it is late. Yeah, it is late. What time is it? Uh, it is. It's 9.50. No, that's not. That's just late in our household. It's really late in our <laughs> household. We've got to go in and do stories. I know Eli's going to be there with his little Bible waiting to read. So we got to go do that. How perfect, Melissa, how perfect. I know, doesn't that sound so... <laughs> he has this little childhood Bible and he has this, <laughs> He wants to read two chapters a night. No, Eli is probably doing the best out of all of us on keeping up on his Bible. Like, I, I I, know he is. I know. He tells me that he's like... Have you read he sent book? He sent me a text, not, not a text message, but he has a little tab that he has access to and he sent me a message saying, what did it say? Like, read, read, read the your, Bible. Read your Bible, Dad. Read your Bible. And I was like, mm. I can't even say anything to that. He's right. Yeah, well, he had one that he couldn't really understand. He had like a just a traditional little... King James Version. Bible. Yeah, it was like a little Precious Moments Bible. It was for kids and everything, but it was just the Too thin much. pages. And he yeah. was just, he was trying. And so I got him, it was like story, Bible stories for kids. Mm-hmm. And so each chapter is just like a story, but it starts in Genesis. and But it's for kids. And now he's like, I'm reading the Bible. <laughs> he understands That's it. That's a good so. kid. Nothing yeah. like being told by your eight-year-old. I know. Being put in your place by your eight-year-old. He will tell you, too. All right, Mama. Love you. Cheers. <laughs> your water and um, my wine. Yeah, water and wine once again. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. We have a very exciting week happening next week on the show. Chip and Joanna Gaines. Yeah, Chip and Joanna Gaines are going to be here. I mean, if they can make it. Can't wait for that. So yeah. we will see you then. Um, until then. No, I'll just, I'm just preparing for next week. Chip and Joanna Gaines. All right, guys, we'll see you. Thanks. They're never going to come. They're coming.